This is for the Ethics Review class at Parker University. Uh, this is continuation of the review of the 12 licensing board rules. The third rule we're going to take a quick look at is the requirement to pay student loans. Like the two previous rules, this is also a very, very simple rule. Uh, the board has the discretion in some cases to not renew a license if the doctor has defaulted on a student loan. Now, generally for the purposes of this type of rule, a default on a student loan doesn't occur unless the uh, doctor is more than nine months behind. This is not the kind of situation where a doctor is a few days behind or even a month behind and the state board is starting to look at taking the doctor's license away. The doctor has to become very seriously in default before the board starts to take action. Now, in addition to refusing to renew or revoking the chiropractic license, the board may also take other disciplinary action that may be uh, uh, slightly less but I also suspect that if the doctor continues to fail to pay the student loans, that the uh, board will ultimately revoke the uh, chiropractic license or refuse to renew it. Now, the, the, the message here is that doctors have received the benefit of student loans to support their education. The government has promised that those loans will be repaid, so it costs the government money if the students don't repay those loans. To protect itself, the government keeps this leverage, along with some other very significant leverage in the student loan world, to help collect those student loans. But the other side of the student loans is because the loans are guaranteed by the federal government, the banks providing those loans understand that they will be paid eventually. Historically, they have been very generous or very flexible in the repayment schedules they will accept. They usually will not accept a discounted payment. Can't go to them and say you owe $100,000 and ask them to accept $50,000 as payment in full. But what they will do is give you an extended period of time to pay the loan. Uh, and currently, they will even, depending on the nature of the loan, the bank can even provide a payment plan based on the income of the student. Now this is unlike any other loan that's out there and the key to avoid this disciplinary action is to communicate with the uh, person servicing the loan, the bank or other institution servicing the loan, and to work with them and be reasonable with them in developing a repayment plan to cure the default and uh, bring the loan back into good status and to negotiate with them a reduced payment plan if that's what you need at that particular point in time. They'll also do all kinds of other types of payment plans, graduated payment plans, etc., to help you get back on track and to help you uh, uh, get those loans paid. So take the time to communicate with them. Do not ignore letters that you're past due. Do not ignore letters that you are in default. Communicate with the student loan servicing companies to be certain that you resolve the problem before it gets to the Board of Chiropractic Examiners. If nothing else, you want to avoid that embarrassment. So very simple. If possible, pay your loans on time. If you can't pay your loans on time, communicate with the servicing company to develop a payment plan that you can meet. And that's the end of this tape.